They taught you a white Jesus when they came to God. That's what they did. And guess what you still do to this day? You worship that white Jesus. I see white Jesus on all of your churches. All throughout Ghana, the blackest continent on earth. We in Africa. Ain't nothing but black people in Africa. But I see a white Jesus on your cars. I see a white Jesus in your churches in the blackest continent on earth. That makes no sense. You understand English? Watch this. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Let me show you something. The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. You hear what the Bible says? It says to repent. That means you don't do it no more when you learn the truth. When I learned the truth that this was bad, I never did it again. That's called repentance. I can't change. Listen. Are you married? Are you married? You are married? Okay, that's good. Do you keep the Lord's Sabbath day? You keep the Sabbath day? Sabbath? Okay, so there's still things that you gotta learn. Just like there are things that I have to improve on, right? That's what the Bible's about. It's about change, getting better. Give me Leviticus 19, verse 27, about the, uh, about the tattoos, verse 28. Book of Leviticus chapter sis, sis, Listen, this is what we learned, read. Book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28 Ye shall not make any curtains in your flesh For the dead Nor print any marks upon you You hear what the Bible says? She wasn't listening Listen, listen Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28 Ye shall not make any curtains in your flesh So we're not supposed to cut ourselves Like you just get the tribal cuts God says don't do that Read Ye shall not make any curtains in your flesh For the dead no print any mask upon you like this the bible says don't do that but if you did that in the past and you learn new you stop doing that you don't do it anymore that's called repentance that's why christ came jesus christ came so we can repent now i got a question for you what color is jesus christ who is this who is this who is this you don't go to church? Okay, well that's actually a good thing because the churches are full of lies, okay? So, who is this? Anybody know? Who is this man? Who is that man? Who is that? Who is that a picture of? Anybody know? What about you, young man? Young man, who is this? You said that's Jesus Christ? What about you, mama? You said that's Jesus Christ? So if I go into the Bible, I'm gonna read that he looks like this. That's what you say? All right, give me Revelation 1 and 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servant, things which must shortly come to pass. The Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Translate for me. So now the Bible's going to tell you what color Jesus is, okay? Read. Verse 14. His head and his head. Well, white like wool. Young man, you listening? Read it again. His head and his head were well, white like wool. The Bible says Jesus Christ's head, meaning his hair, was white like wool, like your hair. Come here. Let me show you. Your hair and my hair, exact same. That's the hair that Jesus Christ had. The Bible said his head and his hair is white like wool. Does he have white woolly hair? No. That's strike one. This man. He doesn't have hair like an African. He don't have hair like her, or like me, or like you. Go ahead. As white as snow, and his eyes as a flame of fire. Whites of, listen, listen, you need to learn this. The whites of Jesus' eyes were red with wine, because he drank wine. That was his first miracle. He turned water into wine. That was his first miracle. Read. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in the furnace. So, my sister, my sister, could you see my sister's feet? You see her feet? Is her feet the same color as her arms? Yes, the same color. Just like your feet is the same color as your arms, which is the same color as your face. Jesus Christ, his feet were like fine brass. Read. 
Anybody know what brass is? Anybody know what you know what brass is? It's derivative of brown. It's brown. If I burn it, it turns what? No, not white. If you turn, if you take something brown and you burn it in fire, what color does it turn? It turns black. It turns black. So what color was Jesus Christ? If his feet were so dark, it looked like they burned in fire. What color were they? Black. Now, hold this picture up. Put that down. I want you to hold this up. Young man, young man, young man, right here. Listen, listen. Look at this. The Bible says Jesus Christ looks more like this. His head and his hair is a white like wool, as white as snow, eyes as a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. The entire Bible is talking about black people. There is no white man in the Bible that it looks like Jesus Christ, none. Jesus is a black man. Now, watch this. Here's a question for you. What color is God? What color is God? You don't know. Daniel 7 and 9. Let me show you what color God is. Because Jesus said, I look like my father, right? Is Jesus the son of God? Is Jesus the son of God? Yes. So he must look like his father. Watch this. Read. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit. The ancient of days is God because he's older than time. Okay, read. Whose garment was white as snow. So God has a garment, read. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. What kind of hair did God have? Wool. What is wool? Is that white people hair? Is that this hair right here? Is that the type of hair Jesus had? What does the Bible say Jesus' hair was like? Woo, Afro, African, like yours. God also has hair like woo, African hair. Now, give me Job 30 and 30. So now we come here to God and tell you, you're not Ghanaian. You're not Ashanti. You're the Israelites. You are the Israelites. You are God's chosen people. Guess what? Jesus looks like you. God looks like you. The angels look like you. And the prophet Job looks like you. Give me Job 30 and 30. The book of Job, chapter 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. What did he say? Listen. My skin is black upon me. Is your skin black? Ah. So you look like the prophet Job. Why in the church did they never tell us that Job was a black man? Why? Young man, come here. Come close. Come close. I want to talk to you. You're my brother. I come all the way from America to talk to you. Okay? The Bible says that Job had black skin. So what color was Job? He's a black man. Job is a black man. Jesus is a black man. God is a black man. Now give me Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Because the white man came to your country and he gave you a white picture of Jesus. When I go to your churches in our, throughout Kamasi, throughout Ghana, throughout Africa, I see white pictures of Jesus. That's not Jesus. Jesus is a black man according to the scriptures. You understand? Read what you got. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Now Solomon, Solomon, King, they, uh, Jesus Christ is a descendant of King Solomon. Right? Watch this. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black, but comely. What color did Solomon say he was? He said, I'm black. Solomon said that he is a black man. You understand? So Solomon is a black man. Job is a... God is a... Jesus is a... All black. So who is this? Give me Daniel 10 and 5. Look at this. Why did they give us this? Why would Ibruni come to your country and give you this? This ain't in the Bible. You understand that, brother? Stripping the coat coat? This not in the Bible. You'll never read this. But you do read about this. You do read about the Israelites, God's chosen people being black people. Now watch this. Lamentations chapter 5. Watch this. Don't leave. Listen to this. You too, brother. Don't listen. Don't leave. Dad, which one? Lamentations 5 and 7? Young man. Young man. Don't leave. You too, brother. You too. Don't leave. I want you to hear this. Watch this. Their visits. Four and eight. Come on. The book of Lamentation, chapter 4, the verse 8. Their visage is blacker than the coal. The visage is talking about the face. The Bible says the face of the children of Israel is blacker than a coal. 
This is what the children of Israel look like. The white man that's in Israel calling himself a Jew, this is not him. He is not this color. Look at this. This is the color of Jesus Christ. This is the color of God. This is the color of the angels. Give me Ezekiel 113 while we at it. It says their visage is blacker than a coal. The Israelites are black men and black women. And guess what? The people of Ghana, you are the Israelites. You're God's chosen people, mama. You. You're God's chosen people. You too, young man. Read. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures. The living creatures talking about the angels. So we saw God. We saw Christ. Now we're looking at the angels. The Bible says the living creatures, read. Their appearance was like burning coals of fire. The Bible says the angels of God look like this. This is what God's angels look like. They look like black coal. The people of the Bible are black people. That's right. The Israelites are black skinned people. You understand that, brother? Young man right here in the red. Right here, you, staring. You see this? This is what the Bible says the people of God look like. What color is this? Don't be afraid. Don't be pulled away from the word of God. What color is this? That's black. That's what the Bible's talking about. The children of Israel are black. Now here's a question for my brother right here. My brother right here that's walking away with the hat on. He walked away. What about you? One of you. Let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? Huh? Ghanaian? That's your nationality. Where can I read that in the Bible? No. Yes, sir. Hey, listen. So you say you're Ghanaian. You, you Ghanaian? That's your nationality? What about yours? Your nationality is Ghanaian? You too? Okay. Can I read that name in the Bible? I don't read Ghanaian in the Bible, do I? Watch what the Bible says about you. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, the verse 15. And you shall leave your name for a curse unto my trust. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says we will leave our name for a curse. The name Ghanaian, that's a curse. That's not your true name. Your true name is the children of Israel. You too, brother. You too. You're the children of Israel. You too. You look like somebody from America. I see you in America all the time. All of you are my brothers. You understand? But the Bible tells us who we are. The name Ghanaian is not in the Bible. You understand? Read that again. Isaiah chapter 65 and 15. And me shall leave your name for a curse unto my choice. The Bible says you will leave your name for a curse. So watch this. Show me this sign right here. Let's grab this sign. You don't have to pick it up. Let's get somebody outside the camp to pick it up. Can you see this? Look. Come here real quick. You see this, brother? When you read the Bible, it talks about the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel are God's chosen people. The name Ghanaian is not in there. You won't find Ghanaian in there. You understand? It's not in there. The Bible says Judah, Benjamin, Levi. Those are the names. Somebody give me that map. Who got the map? Is it down here? Watch this. We got the, uh, we got the bullhorn. Huh? Look. Look at this. You see this? So this is going into the kingdom. Of but you do read about the children of Israel losing their names and calling themselves something different. I want you to look at this ancient map. Sisters, sisters, brothers, look at this ancient map. Look at this. Step out. Step down here with me. Let me show you something. Look at this ancient map right here, bro. Look at this. It says, this is the Gold Coast, right? Isn't that what we call Ghana? We call Ghana the Gold Coast, right? Look at the ancient name for Ghana. It was Judah. Kingdom of Judah. Give me that sign. Pass me that sign. Look, the Bible doesn't call you Ghanaian. The Bible calls you the children of Israel. This area, the Gold Coast, or what they call the Slave Coast, look, we die. We die. Or Judah. Kingdom of Judah. Look, that's one of God's people's names. This is the same tribe Jesus Christ came from. He came from the tribe of Judah. So guess what? You're directly related to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not a white man. He's black. And you descend from him. Where my reader at? Come here, reader. I'm going to put the whole thing. Let's get back in the camera. I just wanted y'all to see that up close and personal. Give me, um, give, no, yeah, give me Jeremiah 14 and 2. So God said you will leave your name for a curse. That's what happened. We lost our name. Read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, the verse 2. Do not mourn it, and they get their language. They are black onto the ground. The Bible says the Jews, Judah, they're black. Pick up that sign.
sign for me one more. Oh, they put it back down already. Give me the sign with the map real quick. I want you brothers and sisters to see this because this 17th century map that we have right here shows that you're the children of Israel. Look, Kingdom of Judah, Ghana, the Gold Coast. Look, Jews in Africa. Jews in Africa. Ancient maps show that the people of Ghana are the Jews. You're the Israelites. You're not Ghanaian. You're the people of God. Look, Kingdom of Judah. We die. Or Judah. That's the translation. Give me that again. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Come on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourned, and they get their language. They are black onto the ground. The Bible says the Jews are black. You see that, brother? My brother. The Bible says the Jews are black people. Right. The people of Ghana, this is an ancient map of Ghana. It says the Gold Coast, right? Ghana, kingdom of Judah. The white man said we cannot let these people know that they're the children of God. We got to switch up the names. We got to give them names to change their name. That's what this is all about. You're the people of God. Give me that Lamentations 4 and 7 again. I got to show it to him. What color is this? What is this? You say this is black. Sister, 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 right here, walking away. What color is this? What color is this? You say black? Okay, let's see what the Bible says about the Jews that live in Ghana. Read. The book of Lamentation, chapter 4, verse 8. Their visage is blacker than a pole. Visage means face. The face of the Israelites are blacker than a coal. Look at that. That's not talking about the white man in Israel calling himself a Jew. That's not talking about Ebruni. That's talking about this sister right here. I'm looking at this sister right here. She's an Israelite. I'm looking at you. Your skin is black as a coal. You're the children of God. That's right. You're the Israelites. That's right. They lied to you. You go to church. You go to church. When you go to church, what color is Jesus Christ on your wall? You say he's a white man. But the Bible says the Jews. What? Read it again, brother. Lamentation chapter 4, verse 8. They are vintage. It's blacker than a coal. The Bible says the children of Israel's face are blacker than a coal. Black. Black. You understand that, brother? Right here with the braids on the side. You understand that? Look at this. The Bible says they're blacker than a coal. That's black as you. That's as black as you. Hey, come here, Jesus come here. Christ, come, come here, bro. Come here, come, come here. here. I want, I want to show you yeah, that this is the same color as your skin, my brother. Come here, bro. Hey, you, come here, come here. He's scared. He's scared. You come here. You be come a man. Here, come, here. Come, here. come here, come here. Let me show you something. Look at this. Come here. Put your arm out. Put your arm out. Put your arm out, brother. Put your arm out. Look at this. Get this on camera. Get this on camera. Look at that. The Bible says your visage is blacker than a coal. Different shades of brown. That's what we are. So guess what? Go back to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Thank you, sir. Go back to Revelation 1, 14. Young man, you say you go to church, right? And when you go to church, you say you see a white picture of Jesus. Is that biblically accurate? Is Jesus white? You say no. Okay, what about you, young man? What about you? Is Jesus Christ a white man? You say he's a black man. Why? Because you saw that the Bible says the Jews are blacker than a coal. But for those listening that may not know this, let me show you what the Bible says Jesus Christ looks like. Don't hey, hey, don't leave, brother. Y'all missing out on some good information running away. Listen. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his ass were wet like wool. The Bible talking about Jesus. He had hair like this brother right here. He had hair like you. I know you were scared to come up earlier, but Jesus got hair like you, brother. Right? Go ahead. As white as snow. And it's as white as snow. Because when a black man gets older, his hair turns white. Read. And his face as a flame of fire, and his eyes as a flame of fire, Read. and his feet like unto fire and brass, as if they burn in a furnace. Do you know what the Bible says about Jesus? The Bible says Jesus Christ's feet were so dark, it looked like they burned in fire. If I step out right now, Lord will I don't fall and bust my ass. Look at this. That's the color Jesus Christ was according to the Bible. The Bible says he was dark skin. Yes. This. You see this man right here? That's not a biblical image of Jesus. Jesus don't look like that. Some, some people say that? Okay, that would be true. He's not white. He's a black man according to the Bible. This is the biblical description. The Bible says the Jews are black. They look like this. Dark skin like this brother right here. Look at this right here. He didn't want to come up there. Look at this right here. That's the color Jesus Christ is. You understand? Same with this brother. Look. That's the color of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Same with you. And I want to ask you. Yeah. Yes. 
show the cross is a form of Roman persecution. You know what persecution is? That's when you kill somebody. One of the high uh, crucifixes do. But they will persecute us and crucify us on these. They will kill thousands of us on these. So that's not nothing to wear and adhere to. Actually what it is is a form of white supremacy. The white man knows when he sees you wearing the cross that he got you still mentally enslaved. You understand what I mean? Now watch this. I'll take your chapter two. Yes. Yes, what's your question? Thank you, sweetie. Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic. That's you? You're, you're Roman Catholic? Are you Roman Catholic? You are Roman Catholic? Okay. The Romans, what did they do to Jesus? The Romans killed Jesus. The, no, the Romans killed Jesus. The white man, the Romans, they killed Jesus. You understand? Behind that symbol comes Roman Catholicism. The Romans are the one that instituted the transatlantic slave trade. Pope Nicholas V, that's how they came and got our ancestors and put them on ships and took them to America. That's how my ancestors got from Ghana to America. They put us on slave ships. That's what the Romans did. That's what the Spanish did. That's talking about the white man. The Bible says we should never wear anything like that. You understand? That's the teacher of lies. Matter of fact, you should throw that away. You should throw that away. Could you give me that in Isaiah 40, uh, what is it? Isaiah 30, 20 through, 22? I want you to hear. I want you to hear what God says you should do with that. That's a graven image. Remember, you should have no other God before the God of the Bible. I want the position. I'm going to give it to you right now. I got you right now. Isaiah 30, 22. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 22. Ye shall defile also the prophet of thy graven image. The Bible says you should defile that. That's the molten image, the graven image. Come on. Of thy graven images of silver and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Some people make that out of silver and gold. Have you ever seen a silver cross or a gold cross? That's what the Bible's talking about. But the same thing for that wooden cross. Come on. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstrual cross. So when a woman gets done with her menstrual cross, every month the woman bleeds between her legs and her vagina, right? And she gets a cloth to catch the blood. And then after she's done, she throws the cloth away. God says that's what you should do with that graven image. You're supposed to hate that and take that off your neck. Take it off. Take that off your neck. That's a teacher of lies. Jesus Christ died on that. Throw that thing away. Throw it away, brother. Throw it away. Throw it away. Throw it away. Here, throw it away for you. Here, throw it away. Let now let him throw it away, bro. Let him throw it away. Look at this demon. Look at this dude with a demon right here. He don't even know. Right. No, you can throw that away. You can throw that away. The Bible says, give me that on my own way. Watch this. When you go home, you're going to put it back on your neck. Don't let this man do that. Listen to what the Bible says. Hey, listen to the Bible, brother. What's your name? What's your name? Adama. Okay, Adama, right? That's your name, right? So watch what the Bible says. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Who should you obey? God or man? His friend. You're supposed to obey God, right? God said, throw that away. Immediately. Give me Psalms 119. The Bible says, throw that away right now. Verse 60. Watch this. No, listen, I want you to hear. This is what the Bible says, my brother. Don't let nobody take you away from God. You're not going to stand before Him on Judgment Day. You're going to stand before God on Judgment Day. So that's what you should fear. Watch this. Read. Psalm chapter 119, verse 16. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The Bible said, I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Look, look. Look at him. You understand? The Bible says you delay not to keep God's commandment. You better keep God's commandment. That's fine. Throw it away. Throw it away. Don't let no man fool you from the word of God. Are you going to make money? Are you going to make money? You got to escort him? Or you got, you got money for him? You owe him money or something? You took money out of your hand. You see what I'm saying? That's how they're trying to pull you away from the word of God. 
I know this man. You know this man? Okay, so you need to come and join us. You got to throw away your idols and your graven images. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Yes, we're here for you. I want that cross. Let me get the cross. He gone. Let me get it. The cross. Let me get it. We're going to throw it away. We're going to throw it away. We're going to throw that thing away. Watch this. Why do you have to wait? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. Verse 4. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus. So when the white man, the British, the Dutch, when they came to Ghana, what did they teach you? They taught you a white Jesus, young man. You hear that, young man? They taught you a white Jesus when they came to Ghana. That's what they did. And guess what you still do to this day? You worship that white Jesus. I see white Jesus on all of your churches. All throughout Ghana, the blackest continent on earth. We in Africa. Ain't nothing but black people in Africa. But I see a white Jesus on your cars. I see a white Jesus in your churches in the blackest continent on earth. That makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense that you have a white man that you call your savior. This white man has done nothing for your country. He has done nothing but rob your country. Steal your bauxite, steal your gold, steal your diamonds, steal your cocoa, kill your leaders. That's what he's doing, assassinate your leaders, exile your leaders like Kwame and Kuma. The big six, what did they do to them? This is what they do to all our leaders. Same thing they did in America to Martin Luther King. Same thing they did in America to Malcolm X. It's the same thing, it's no different. The white man has control over your mind and God is trying to break your mind from those mental chains. That's right. Read that scripture again. I'll let somebody else come up. Come on. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. So when the white man came to this side of the world, when he came to Africa, when he came to St. Tome, when he came to the west coast of Ghana, when he came to Sierra Leone, when he came to Nigeria, guess what he did? He brought another Jesus. He brought a Jesus of his own imagination, not a Jesus of the Bible. Because the Jesus of the Bible does not condone idolatry, and he was a black man. Read. Whom we have not preached, if you receive another spirit. Young brother, young brother, young brother, let me ask you a question. 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 How many of you celebrate Christmas? Sister, sister right here. Sister right here. One of your sisters. How many of you celebrate Christmas? You celebrate Christmas? Do you celebrate Christmas? You don't celebrate Christmas? What about you, sister? Do you celebrate Christmas? Okay. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Why do you wear trousers? Why do you wear pants? That's not in the Bible. Okay, watch this. Deuteronomy 22. Let's help the young sister out because he's very humble. You're a very humble young sister. Look! Look on the back of this man's van. Look what that's what I'm talking about, man. Look on the back of his van. Is that a picture of Jesus on the back of this van? Is that a picture of Jesus? My brother. My brother. What is this on the back of Church of Israel Miracle? Church of Israel Miracle International. That, that, that image that's on the back of your van, ask him, that's ask not him. Jesus. Ask him, tell him I want to rip it off. Can I do it? That image on the back of your van is not Jesus that's Christ. That's not Jesus. Jesus is not you a You got to take that off. Jesus doesn't look he like said, that. He said, yeah. He said, I could do it. I could rip it off. Can, Can we take, take that off? off? That's not Jesus. That's the false image. Right. That's going to stop you from getting the kingdom of heaven, brother. I idolizing that's going to stop you from getting the kingdom ask of heaven. Ask him if I can take it off. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5 for the sister. Listen, sister. 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 Young sister. Young sister. What's your name? Chariot. Oh, that's beautiful. All praise you. Sister Chariot. So listen. This is what the Bible says about your trousers. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Sister. Sister Chariot. You hear what the Bible says? The Bible says what? The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. God says women shouldn't wear men's clothing. On the front of my pants is a zipper. You know why? Because when I zip, I can flip out and pee. You don't have that. I know you don't have that. You have a dress. You're supposed to wear a dress like Mama right there. You're not supposed to wear pants. That's an evil thing in the sight of God. Keep reading. Watch this. Keep reading for us. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. And a man is what's supposed to wear a dress. Men don't wear dresses. Help her out. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that grew forth are abomination unto the 
Allah than God. So a woman wearing trousers is an abomination to God. Cherry, you hear that? A woman wearing trousers is an abomination to God. You sisters in Ghana that wear pants, the Bible says that's an abomination. You're not supposed to dress like that. Same with your brothers, you're not supposed to wear dresses. Some of you brothers wear the most extreme clothing in Ghana. You wear very effeminate clothing in Ghana. I even saw a man that had on what looked like a dress today. You're not to wear those things. Hey, look on the back of that. Hey, young man, who is that on the back of his van? Who is that? Who is that? Who is this? You say that's Jesus? This brother said that's Jesus Christ, man. Come on, man. Show me in the Bible that Jesus looked like this. Show me that in the Bible that Jesus Christ is a white man. Who's going to show me? Because the Bible says the Jews were black and cold. That's what the Bible said. The Bible said that the Jews are black and cold. That ain't Jesus. That's a white man. That's the devil that the Bible says. That's the devil right there. That ain't Jesus. Watch this. Come on, read it. Give me Revelation. Chapter 13, verse 15. That's the image of the beast right there. That's the devil right there. That's Satan. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 15. And he has power to give life unto the image of the beast. You hear that, brother? The Bible says he has power to give life to the image of the beast. You need to learn this. Because guess what? All of you want to get to the kingdom of heaven. But none of you are going to make it if you serve in that image. If you condone that image, if you say the Son of God look like that, when you see him, you're going to be very afraid. The Bible says Jesus Christ is a black man, brother. And I'm talking to you because you look like a leader. You need to learn this, brother. Jesus Christ does not look like that. He said, hurry up. He said, hurry up and get your face out the way. <laughs> he looked, that's too much heat over here. Jesus don't look like that, bro. Jesus is not a white man. Jesus is a black man. Hold that up for me. Jesus is a black man according to the Bible. Look at that. Look at that right there. That's a better biblical depiction of Jesus Christ. The Bible said his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes was a flame of fire. That's and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Don't run from the word of God. Don't run. That's what our people do. They run from the word of God. They're afraid of the true word of God. But guess what? Christ going to deny you on the day of judgment until you repent, unless you repent. Read it again for me. Revelation 13, 15, real quick. Book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 15. And he has power to give life unto the image of the beast. The Bible says the white man, because that's what the Bible's talking about. The Romans, they gave power to give life to the image of the beast. Can somebody hold that up for me? Hold this up for me. Look, the Bible says they gave this man Jesus Christ's life. When you read the Bible, you're reading about a black man. But they gave this white man Jesus Christ's life. But that's not Christ. Christ is a black man according to the Bible. Read it again. And he has power to give life unto the image of the beast. The white man put this in your movies. He put this in your videos. He put this on the side of your churches. He'll only fund your churches in Africa if you have this as the image. Isn't that right? Isn't that a peculiar? The only reason he'll give you money in Africa to build a Catholic church, you must have his imagery. Keep the people of God indoctrinated. Wait. That the image of the beast should go speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. They killed your ancestors for not believing in this image of Jesus Christ. They killed your ancestors in Ghana for not believing in white Jesus. They enslaved your ancestors and took them to America and the Caribbean islands for not believing in their image of Jesus Christ. They forced your ancestors out of Spain and made them migrate into Africa. Why? Because they would not serve that image right there. Killed your ancestors because they would not serve that image during the Spanish Inquisition. This is the thing they don't tell you in your churches. Do you understand that, brother? Brother right here. Brother right here. He's afraid. Oh, my God. The Bible says that our people should stand up, our men should stand up like men and believe the truth of the gospel. Right? Give me Matthew 24 and I'm going to shut it down. Take up all the brothers' time. You brothers and sisters in Ghana got to wake up, man. You got to wake up, bro. You can't keep serving white Jesus. That's a lie. It's not true. Matthew 24, verse 5. Verse 4 and 5. Book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. Come on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, the peace that no man deceive you. Jesus said, pay attention.
watching. Don't let any man deceive you. Guess what you've been done and how you've been done in Ghana? You've been deceived. You have been deceived. You're under deception. This ain't Jesus. They tricked your mind. Now you walk around here and we say, who is that? You say, oh, that's Yeshua. That is my savior. No. Jesus is not a white man according to the scriptures. Right. That's blasphemy against the word of God. Right. You understand? And that's what your oppressor has done. And he's left you docile and weak. Many of your men in Ghana are afraid to stand up and teach the truth. Jesus doesn't look like that, brother. Christ said, beware lest any man deceive you. Go ahead. For money shall come in my name. Then I am Christ and shall deceive many. The Bible says many men, many people on this earth will come and say that they were Jesus and would deceive many. That's what your pastors have done. All of your pastors in Ghana are liars. Right. Every pastor in Ghana is a liar. None of your pastors are men of God. None of your pastors in your churches are men of God. You know why? Because they teach a white Jesus. Right. And the Bible is against white Jesus. There's nowhere in the Bible can you read that Jesus Christ looked like this. This is the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Do some research. Every time I come to Ghana or Nigeria or anywhere in Africa, all you brothers and sisters do is tell them about how you do research. I got to do my own research. But research this image right here. Because this is the image of the beast. That's, right. That's not Jesus. Right. Revelation 1.14 again, man. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. I know you ain't never heard this before. Because your pastors don't do nothing but take your money. You're already poor. White man already come to take all your resources. Your bauxite, your cocoa, your gold. They call this the Gold Coast, but yet none of you own any gold. Right. Does that make any damn sense? This is the Gold Coast, but you don't own any gold. Because the white man is robbing you blind. Right. Oh. And guess what you say? Oh, we must forgive. We must love our enemy. And he's destroying you and taking everything from you. Your children are poor because he takes your gold and gives it to his children. He puts his children through college. He sets up businesses and wealth for the future for his children with your children's gold. It makes no sense. When are you going to wake up and repent and hear what God is saying? You got to take those pants off, sister. You got to wear a dress. You understand that, my brother here? You understand? The Bible talks about a black man who came to save his people named Jesus Christ. The Bible does not talk about this man as being Jesus, brother. You, you know that's not Jesus. You don't worship image? Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you go to church? You want to engage me next time? Well, take a flyer. Give him a flyer. Let them give you some literature. Give him a little. Hell, he got you here. Right here. Right there. Give him a flyer. Give him a flyer. And just give us a call. You need to read it again. You need to read it again so you can repent. You need to read it again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Over and over, you need to read it. The hell is this? Read Revelation 1, 14, man. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his head were white like wool. The Bible says Jesus Christ's head and his hair were white like wool. Come on. I swear, I slow. Jesus Christ had white woolly hair, like an afro, like African hair. Come on. And his eyes as a flame of fire. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. That's the whites of his eyes, brothers and sisters. Come on. And his feet like unto fine bread, as if they burn in the furnace. He asked for another Isaac. Isaac, also Isaac, he wants another one. Big brother, my big brother right here. What color is Jesus, bro? What color is Jesus? Is this Jesus? Nah. You say no. Nah. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. That's right. Jesus Christ, a black man. Right. Now, hold on. Wait, wait. I got another question. What's that around your neck? Your symbol. What does your symbol mean? It's life. You said the unk is life. Okay, what does it come from? It comes from ancient Egypt. Okay, what happened to Egypt? What happened to Egypt? Because, because that's I'm talking about now. Because right now there are white people and there are Arab people that live in Egypt today. The, the original Egyptian people are black. You're right. You're right. But what I'm asking you is, what happened to them? I say 43. Now, what happened to them? Yeah, because yeah, they're not in the land anymore. Today, many of the Egyptians are known as Sudanese or Watusi. Right? They're not in their land anymore. You know why they're not in their land? I'm going to read it to you. Watch this. Read I said 43 and 3. Book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I give Egypt for thy ransom. The Bible says God gave Egypt for the ransom of the children of Israel. Have you ever read the Bible? 
I used to. Oh, you used to? I'm no more religious. Okay, I understand. The Bible's not a religious book. The Bible is a history book. The white man took it and made religion out of it. You understand? He gave us a false image, and he came and he conquered Ghana and took all the resources. And he gave us this image. And then he told us that the Bible was his book. But when we read the Bible, it's full of black people. It's ours. So the Bible says the Lord gave Egypt for our ransom. The Lord killed the Egyptian firstborn son to save our people out of it. Watch this, watch. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Go ahead. And Ethiopia and Serbia for thee. Read. Says thou was precious in my sight. When you read the Bible, the God of heaven never called the Egyptians precious in his sight. He always called us children of Israel precious in his sight. When you read this sign right here, this sign right here is talking about the children of Israel. So-called blacks, Hispanic, and Native American Indians, and all those scattered throughout the diaspora are the children of Israel. Give me that ancient map one more time. When you look at the ancient, you from Ghana? You are from Ghana? Okay. I'm from Ghana too. But they took my ancestors to America as slaves. But I'm your brother. And I'm back here to teach you the truth. So watch what the Bible says. So the Bible says the Lord gave Egypt for our ransom. Because he loved us. And we press us in his sight. Read that again in the last part, verse 4. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 4. Says, thou was precious in my sight. Thou hast been honorable. And I have loved thee. Go ahead. For therefore, I will give man for thee. God loved us so much that he killed the Egyptians to save us. Now, look at this map. This is an ancient 17th century map of Ghana. Look at it. Kingdom of... You see that? You're not Egyptian. You don't descend from the Egyptians. Ancient Kemet, ancient Egyptians had us in slavery. They had us as slaves. Now we worship their religion. Now we worship their ideology, their doctrine. But the Bible says the children of Israel were saved out of Egypt. And the people of Ghana are of the kingdom of Judah. Good. Look at this. Weda or Wida. That's the same word as Judah. Jews in Africa. This map is from 1747. In the 1700s, the white man knew that you and your ancestors were from the tribe of Judah. Right. Then they changed it and said, no, you're Ghanaian. You're not Judah. Yeah. They did that to switch up your mind. But you're actually Judah. They just want to hide this from you. Yeah, that makes sense? Right, right, yes, we're the Jews. And I can prove it. Watch this, Jeremiah 14 and 2. The Bible tells you what color the Jews are. Watch this, Jeremiah chapter 14. I'm going to read this for my brother real quick. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Listen, brother. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Do the money and they get their language. They are black unto the ground. You see what color the Jews are? What's the Bible say? Black unto the ground. Now there's another scripture. You want me to Lamentations 4 and 8? There's another scripture to tell you how black they are. Watch this. Lamentations 4 verse 8. Because you got to know this, brother. Watch this. Read. The book of Lamentations chapter 4 verse 8. The abyssage is blacker than the coal. The Bible says the Jews' visage. Visage means their face. The face of the Jews is blacker than the coal. Does that sound like a white man? That's not a white man's color. It's talking about you. The Lord saved you from the Egyptians and killed their firstborn son to save you. Now you wear the ump that represents Egypt. You got to take it off. It's more knowledge in this Bible than what you know. Religion? No way. No, we don't believe. We don't agree with Christianity. We're not Christians in the sense of Christianity. But we are the biblical Christians, which were Israelites. God say you got Exodus 1, you got Exodus 1, verse, uh, what is it? Where's the Exodus 1, uh, 11 and 7? Watch this. Let me say what God says regarding the, the children of Israel and the Egyptians. Exodus 11 and 7. Book of Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. But against the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord do put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. You hear that? God put a difference between who? The Egyptians and Israel. So an Israelite, which is what you are, you should never wear that. I know it's fashion. I know it's something you're learning, but it's not the truth. God actually destroyed the Egyptians to save your ancestors. And he told us to never go back to Egypt. You got that in Exodus 14, 13? He said, never go back to Egypt, brother. That's what God said. Read that for me. The book of Exodus chapter 14, verse 
13. Watch this. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. You hear that? Fear ye not, stand still, and see salvation of the Lord. This is what Moses is telling the children of Israel after we were released from Egypt. Come on. Which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom he have seen today, he shall see them again no more forever. You hear what the Bible says? We are not supposed to see the Egyptians no more forever, meaning we're not supposed to go back into their idolatry. Give me that in Exodus, I mean Leviticus 18. What is it, verse 3? The Lord says not to pick up any custom from Egypt. The cutting of your eyebrows that comes from Egypt. 18. Right? Say 18 and 1. I thought it was 3. 18 and 2. Yeah, we are all the way down to 3. 3, 1 and 2, 3. Yes, sir. Book of Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. He your God. The Bible never talks about him being the Egyptian's God, the white man's God, the Arab man's God, the Chinese man's God, the Philistine God. No, he's your God. Literally yours. That's why he made you as strong as you are. That's why we're the best looking, best athlete, smartest people on the planet Earth. We're supposed to rule everything. We lost it because we wanted to live like the Egyptians. God took our history, took our heritage from us. Right? Come on. Verse 3. After the dreams of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do? Read it again. After the dreams of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwell, shall ye not do? God said we are not to do anything that they did in Egypt. Guess what they had in ancient Egypt? The uh -huh. And guess what our people used to do? We used to wear the ankh in ancient Egypt. God says never do that again. You will never see those Egyptians again. Never look back. You understand? So are you willing to take that off for God? Oh yeah, 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 I can do that. You willing to take it off for God? Let me see. Let me see, let me see you do it. Let me see you take that ankh off for God and throw that thing to the street. It means nothing. It's idolatry. I, I, I want to read something about it. Okay. I want to learn about it. Okay. We, that's what I'm showing you right here. The Lord killed the Egyptians. That's why the ancient Egyptians are not in their land anymore. The Lord destroyed the Egyptians for what they did to us. He took their land from them. And now, what, Ottoman Turks? Is it Ottoman Turks? Uh, and, and the Arabs and white men. Arabs? Ottoman Turks. Ottoman Turks, the Arabs, the white men. Now they occupy Egypt. And you got, in Egypt, you got a, a city called Alexandria that's named after Alexander the Greek. You know why? Because the Greeks conquered Egypt and knocked the noses off the Sphinx. The Lord hates Egypt and what they did to God's people. He never loved them. He only loves us. And that's why he said you should never go back and do what they did. You should turn your back on Egypt all the way. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth